Chapter 31 and 32, I'm going to look at open economy, the open economy in macroeconomics. And actually what we're going to do with this, this video is, or essentially we're going to break it into three videos. Uh, the first video, I'm going to introduce to you some basic terms and concepts. Some of them we talked about already, but other ones might be new to you. And the second video, we're going to look specifically at a, an example of some of the concepts that we're going to look at in this first video. And in the third video, we're going to walk through some of the application of globalization, as you'll see it on the AP exam, with respect to the foreign exchange market. All right, so let's start this thing right off from the top. And what we're going to do first is talk about how the world is today, because the world today is, as you know, we've talked about in class, it's a global economy. There's a term for this called globalization, which represents the notion that the markets around the world are interwoven, they're interdependent. So what happens in one part of the world can drastically affect what happens in the other part in another part of the world. We've seen this over the recent uh, US history in our economy as Europe, um, their recession and austerity measures, cutbacks in spending, have really affected our markets here because they import 25% of all of our exports. Anyway, so there are two terms for this. Uh, the first term is what's called a closed economy. And the closed, a closed economy is an economy that simply is reluctant to interact with other markets. The closest example to a closed economy that we have in our world today is North Korea. Uh, North Korea is in the news a lot right now. Um, but they just seem very reluctant to open their markets and to allow for free trade. Uh, which, again, is, is how most of the world works. So most of the world is actually what we call an open economy, like the United States or South Korea or Europe. And so open economies basically allow for free trade. They allow for interaction with other economies in the world. And this is something we touched on at the very beginning of the class, saying that free trade makes everybody better. Okay. Anyhow, so again, looking at basic concepts here, when we sell stuff to other countries, when we sell our goods or our services to other countries, it's what we call exports. We produce them here domestically and we sell them to other countries. Now, it's a two-way street. We also buy stuff, right? So the stuff we buy is and what we, what we call or refer to as imports. So we have exports and we have imports, all part of this concept of free trade. Now, when a country wants to engage in globalization. They want to buy and sell from each other. They can either just buy the products from another country or sometimes they'll even set up shop in another country. For instance, our country developed the concept of Disney World. Today, Disney World is not limited to just the United States. It's all over the world. One such example would be in Japan and of course in Europe. So when we set up shop, our company sets up shop in another country, we call this a foreign direct investment. It is a direct uh, investment of a capital good for the purpose of manufacturing in another country. And companies do this for a lot of reasons. They do it to cut costs. They do it to you know avoid exchange rates. Again, stuff we'll talk about in this um, couple videos or in class. Another example would be this picture to the right, uh, which you can see is a BMW manufacturing plant. Now, BMW is a car, a German car. The BMW is manufactured, of course, in its host country, but it's also uh, manufactured in the United States. And this picture to the right shows a BMW company in South Carolina or a manufacturing hub in South Carolina. So they're actually building them in South Carolina, employing U.S. workers, adding to our GDP, and then selling them around, you know, around the world. Well, in this case, in the United States, but all over the world. Okay, so um, when we or other countries invest in their own capital goods in other countries, we call this a foreign direct investment. And as as I said, we we have a couple examples of this, uh, you know, that we look at on this slide where we have us or the Disney World Company in Europe, and then um, the BMW in South Carolina, the BMW car in South Carolina. Okay, now this gets to some of the more technical stuff, which not really overly um, 
convoluted or anything. But the first term is what we call a balance of trade. See, we sell a lot of stuff to other countries, but we also buy a lot of stuff from other countries, right? We buy a lot of stuff from other countries. So what we do is we actually look at the balance of that. We look at the value of that. And to determine the balance of this, and if you remember back from our lessons on GDP, <clears throat> what we do is we actually take the exports and we subtract the imports. We take the exports minus the imports. So the exports minus the imports will give us our balance of trade, whether we have a trade deficit, trade surplus, whether we're a buying country or we're, whether we're a selling country. Now, there is a really important term that you need to know, which you could potentially see on free responses, or you might see in multiple choice. It's what it's called the current account. So when you hear about the current account in, um, well, actually, let me step back. When you hear about trade, um, balance of trade in the news, okay, you're talking about like, you know, the trade deficits and trade surpluses. What they're actually talking about is this, the current account. Okay, it's our current nation's current account balance. It is the respective re um, value of all of the stuff we sell minus all the stuff we buy. So the current account balance is either going to be positive or negative. All right, let's talk about that. So if we are um, running a trade surplus, that means that we are actually selling more than we're buying, right? We have an excess of exports over our imports, or put another way, our exports are greater than our imports. On the other hand, if we're running a trade deficit, that means that our imports exceed our exports. We're more of a buyer than we are a seller. Again, trade surplus is going to be where we are selling more than we buy, and a trade deficit would be that we are buying more than we sell. All right, so what happens if it's completely balanced? Well, if exports are equal to imports, then we have balanced trade. As we've talked about in class, the United States does not have a, a balanced trade. We, for quite a while, have been running trade deficits. All right, so bringing that, us back to this concept of globalization, what happens when we run trade deficits. Well, we're going to actually look at, it again, some examples of how this works. But another important part to the whole balance of trade is analyzing or the analysis of uh, money flowing in and out of the country, okay? Because if we sell less stuff than we buy, then we have to make up for that deficit somehow. And a lot of times what happens is in the United States, we actually borrow, right? We borrow money. <laughs> So um, when countries want to invest in other countries like China investing in the United States, that's a, a hot topic here lately, obviously, um, we call this a foreign portfolio investment. So like, again, we're, we as a country are running trade deficits. How do we close the gap of that? How do we make up for the money that is actually flowing out of the country as we buy more stuff than we sell, as other countries get more money of ours than we get of theirs. Well, we close the gap through borrowing. And so a good example of this would be how China uh, has become a huge owner of U.S. debt. And if you could look over here, this is, I think, from 2012, but U.S. Treasury Department released this. The biggest owner of uh, U.S. debt or biggest foreign owner is China. Um, obviously, there's a lot of domestic, you know, domestically held bonds by people here in the United States that bought government bonds. But China holds a huge amount in internationally. All right. So recall from the very beginning of class when we talked about the factors of production, that is land, labor, and capital. And capital comes in a few different forms. We have physical capital. That's machines and factories and things that are used to produce goods and services. We have uh, human capital, which is the investment in your own knowledge base, your skills, your abilities, your um, overall education, all right, your ability to do something better than you could prior to attaining these skills. And finally, financial capital. Financial capital is a lot of times what you hear on the news when they're talking about capital of businesses. And financial capital represents the money that we would borrow as a business owner or an entrepreneur to expand our business, right, to invest in capital goods. So in the analysis of the balance of trade, there's another uh, part to the balance, and that is the capital count, or what you'll probably see, I believe I read somewhere that they're actually transitioning into this, calling this the financial account, but that's what this reflects. It's called the financial count or the capital count. I know in free, previous free responses, they call it the capital count, 
Uh, but anyway, the capital count, financial count, is the balance of money flowing in and out of the country um, reflective of investments of foreign debt, okay? Bonds, stocks, any type of financial asset. All right, so last slide for this video. We call um, the flow of goods and services in and out of the country the net capital flow or net capital outflow. And this is the balance of the, the amount of U.S. dollars flowing out and foreign dollars fl flowing in, okay? Or just one country's income um, or money flowing out, another country's money flowing in. With net capital outflow, it can either be positive or negative. If it's positive, okay, and this is kind of weird because usually you think of positive, uh, like trade surplus, something being positive, that means that you have more of something. In this case, a positive uh, net capital outflow actually means that you are sending more money out of the country to buy foreign goods than is flowing in of the, into the country. So financial capital is actually flowing out of the nation. In this case, you're buying more foreign assets, more foreign um, portfolio investment. If it's negative, then that means that other countries are buying more of our, you know, financial assets, our national, um, you know, bonds and stocks and other things than we are of other countries. So in the United States, we actually sell more, you know, right now we sell more of our debt, if you will, our portfolio investments than we buy from other countries. Okay, that concludes video number one.